Remix Development Environment. If we go to the documentation and go to this installing Solidity compilers, we should see a wide variety of ways of installing a compiler and using it in our CLI or with the binaries. There's multiple different ways of actually compiling the code into the bytecode. Most of these ways of using the compiler is a bit more advanced and is out of the scope of this course. So for us to get used to using Solidity and compiling it, we can make use of an IDE, an integrated development environment. An IDE is great because not only does it help us with the compilation step, but also can help us in the deployment and testing phases as well. An example of a development environment is Remix. Here we can go to remix-project.org and feel free to read up more what the team does, but we can see that they have a development environment for desktop, but most importantly, they have the same environment for the browser. So let's click on that. And you can find the browser IDE if you go to remix.ethereum.org. And this is how it looks. A Solidity development environment right here in our browser for us Solidity developers to write code, deploy it, test it and have some fun. It's important to note that Remix is great for learning Solidity and testing smart contracts, deploying it on the fly. It is really good for that. But when it comes to bigger projects and proper blockchain development, I highly recommend a local development environment. Later on in this course, I will show you how to set one up. For now, let's get used to Remix and how we can use it. Let's start by familiarizing ourselves with the layout. On the right hand side, this big panel over here, where it says home currently, basically this is our working area where we will be writing smart contracts. For example, it now says home, but I'm going to close this and instead I'm going to open a random smart contract by selecting it in this file explorer. I can open multiple smart contracts and in the working area, I can switch between them over here at the top and also just simply close them. Right below our working environment and we can open it up by dragging the slider. This is known as our console and this will give us feedback to whatever we are busy doing. Whether we are executing contract interactions, deploying contracts, maybe errors occur in our code. This is where we'll get some feedback. Moving over to the left hand side, we can see this file explorer panel. Now this panel in particular will change depending on which tab you have selected on the left hand side. Let's stay on the first tab and this is the file explorer tab and let's briefly discuss this. Now there's a lot that you can do with this section such as push the code to GitHub, but most importantly this is where the contract files will be that we write. We usually place our contract files in the contract folder. For the rest of the folders, if we go to the readme.txt, we can see that the scripts folder contains four TypeScript files to deploy a contract. It references the storage file currently that it's deploying. So if we look at it, we can see that it's trying to deploy this first file. And this we can use on our own by simply replacing the file's name. We won't need it when we use Remix. For the test folder, this is where you can write some tests and it shows you how you can test the smart contract. We will cover tests when we look at the local environment that we are going to set up later. For now, this is not needed as well. But this just gives you a description of what all these files are for. Now let's focus our attention on this drop down. This simply shows us what workspace we are currently in. You can create multiple different workspaces for different use cases. Let's create a new workspace for this tutorial series. To create a new workspace, simply click on this create icon. Then we get to select a template. I'm going to leave mine as default. And then I'm going to rename this to say learning underscore solidity and click on OK. We should now see our new workspace learning solidity and we can always switch between other workspaces. Let's stay on this one 
and this is the one we will use. Great, so let's move on. Now we can move over to the next tab, which is search in files. Basically, if you have a lot of files, you can easily find things that's in files by searching in here. And if we go to the next tab, this is the Solidity compiler. By now we know that a compiler has different versions. So here we can select a whole list of them. But how do we know what compiler to select? Well, this will be determined by the code file that we write. Let's look at this owner.sol. If we go at the top, we can see the Pragma Solidity compiler version that it will require over here. The syntax tells us that this code will accept any compiler from 0.7.0 to 0.9.0 and our compiler is currently on 0.8.17 so this is perfectly fine. We can verify this by either clicking on compile the owner.sol and there it is successfully compiled. We can see now all this information about the contract and also this green tick. We can also go ahead and switch this auto compile on meaning if anything changes in the file, it will automatically compile. Now let's see what will happen if I choose a very low compiler version, maybe something here in the fives, we can see that there's some errors and that's because there's some breaking changes and this compiler won't work. So it will autocorrect it to the right compiler. If it doesn't autocorrect, you can always select the correct compiler over here. Okay. So let's move on and two of the most important things on this compiler that I need to mention is that here you can copy the ABI as well as the full on bytecode of this contract. Another thing that happens when you compile a contract is if we go back to our files we can now see in our contracts folder is an extra folder called artifacts. Artifacts is a folder that's generated at the compilation step that holds the ABI, the bytecode of the contract and so on. This will just be auto-generated. Also note that dependencies get imported as we compile because sometimes smart contracts make use of outside smart contract source code. So it imports it over here. Okay, let's move on to the deploy and run transaction section. Now the first really important thing about this section is the environment that you are about to deploy this contract to. Currently the selected environment is the Remix VM virtual machine and the London one. This means that when we deploy this contract, Remix will emulate in the browser a copy of how the Ethereum network works. And they will provide to us a set of accounts that we can test with. Each account has a 100 test ether. This makes it very convenient to test and deploy smart contracts. Alternatively, if we wanted to deploy to the real Ethereum main network, what we could do is select an injected provider such as MetaMask. There's many other providers as well. But let's take a look at this one. So if I select it, this will now pick up that we are on the main network one. So, in our case, this is only our wallet that shows up. The one in our MetaMask over here. Now, this is the real deal. So, if we deploy this contract like this and hit deploy, this will actually be on the live Ethereum network. And if we instead want to deploy to the Sapolia or Gurley network, all we'll need to do is switch the network on our MetaMask to Gurley. And as you can see here, it's busy changing. Now it's on the Gurley network and it's reflecting the account's ether. The same with the Sapolia network, as you can see. So, this is how you can switch the networks and deploy to production-like environments. But in my opinion, it's way better to test your smart contracts and have some fun on the Remix virtual machine because they give us some test ether and we can play around with the deployments. Now that we understand the environment that we are going to deploy the smart contract in, we need to make sure that we are on the correct account that we want to use for the deployment. Next is the gas limit that's going to be sent with the transaction and a value in way 
or you can switch it to Ether. This value is sometimes required when deploying a smart contract. It all depends on the contract that you are deploying. And next, you need to select the contract that was compiled by Remix. So we only have these two and I don't want to deploy this contract. Instead, let me deploy this storage contract. I'll select it, go back, make sure that it is compiled. And in the deploy section now, I can make sure that it is indeed selected. Okay, so let me click on deploy. We can now see that three things occurred. Firstly, our balance was deducted. And this was the gas fee that was required to deploy this contract. Secondly, down here we see a new contract deployed. We can copy its address here, or we can expand it by clicking on this drop down arrow over here. Now we can see some of the functions that's exposed in this smart contract. We'll get to that in a second. The third thing that occurred was this confirmation of a transaction. We can also expand this and see some of the data that was sent with this transaction. Notice how quickly the transaction was processed and that's because this is not a real blockchain where the transaction needs to be mined, but instead this was just happening because it's an emulated environment. Okay, but now we can go ahead and look at these functions. We can see that some of them are blue and orange. This is just a remix coloring convention to let us know what functions are going to change the state. Orange functions changes the state and you know has to do with data manipulation and the blue ones doesn't change state but simply returns a value. If you feel a bit confused don't worry because we're going to code all these things from scratch. Just know to call one of these functions you can simply click on it and there it returns a value zero we get the confirmation of the transaction over here in the console. If we want to store a value, this is what this contract does. We can type in maybe 33, store it, and retrieve it like so, 33. And a contract, as we know, also has a balance. So here we can see the ether balance of this contract, which means if we were to send some ether to this account that we copy and this is how it looks I'm just going to paste it in here if we send it to this address this balance will update okay so that is the basis of deploying and interacting you can also remove by clicking on that X and deploy it again and there it is you can deploy multiple contracts and here it is as well the last thing that I want to touch on is you can go to this section down here, which is the plugin manager. Remix can take in plugins such as maybe verification plugins on Etherscan and a whole bunch of cool like a debuggers and so on. So this is more advanced and we don't need it for this course really. We will touch on a few plugins, but just know that Remix can work with plugins as well. If you need to use the settings to kind of adapt the program to your needs, you can do that too. I'm going to leave everything default. To clean up our environment, we can simply close our contracts and also clear our console with this clear button and give us some more space for writing some code. Because in the next video, we'll look at a contract. But for now, just know that this is the basic walkthrough of how Remix works.